we really generated almost fully functional application really out of nothing. Just those three mm -hmm. lines of code, nothing else. Welcome back. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank, and this is Gregor. And welcome to our next episode of Meta UI TV, where we are going to show you how to set up everything. And we will also build a fully functioning application using one domain model. And out of this domain model definition, we will see how we can automatically build a whole application using the OSS rule set. And thank you again for joining. And I need to also mention, if you have not watched the last episode where we introduced Meta UI, I really recommend to watch this because it will help you a little bit for this one. Exactly, yeah. So I have my IDE already open. Oh, good. And I can mm -hmm. even see that you just created brand new Angular project. So at least we don't need to wait for NPM install to finish because I think this is not the goal of this video, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, let's just focus on Meta UI here and uh, not bother the people with Angular CLI basics, right? Oh, and by the way, uh, Frank and me, we are always looking for ideas and inspiration uh, to make this format as effective as possible for you. So if you have any ideas, concerns, questions, please just leave us a, a comment below this uh, video and then we will answer this and we will come back to you. Yeah, any input is great. And now let's go back to the project and let's add Meta UI to it. Therefore, we have our Angular CLI schematic command that easily helps us to install everything for us. And I think, Frank, you can help us by uh, typing the command because you know everything. <laughs> you have everything in your mind. And I know you already know this command, but <laughs> for the users, uh, let's type ng add. Right. Which we everybody knows. And mm -hmm. add ngx meta UI or ngx dash meta UI mm -hmm. slash rules. All right. Good. Let's pick material. Mm -hmm. So and meta UI uh, just supports uh, multiple uh, frameworks out of the box. Yes. And I would just rephrase this meta UI is UI component agnostic. So you can actually plug in any. UI component library of your choice with a little mm. bit of work. And this is cool. Yeah, uh, this is, I think this is good news for teams having their own component libraries ready and they can just hook up into Meta UI and using this. That's really cool. Yes. Okay, so the script uh, was successful. And okay. now I will just check the project structure, what has changed. And I see, okay, it's a regular Angular project. Um, but inside the app folder, we have now a new rules folder. Yes. So the rule, besides those other things that was created, a rule folder was created. And this is the place where all the rule file will be stored. Just like you have CSS folder where all the stuff related to styling, you usually put in there. and and I see also application OSS, which is the same thing, just like having style CSS or style SAS file, which is the application global scope like file where you usually put everything that you want to have for whole application. Mm -hmm. For common stuff, so common. Rules. Yes, for common mm -hmm. stuff, yes. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the terminal and mm -hmm. let's run another ng command to actually generate the component, the whole view. Ah, oh, okay. So this command is a little bit longer. That's why I just prepare, I'm, I come a little bit prepared. I have this command already here in the uh, readme file. So this is just the uh, yeah, base command. See, 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 I knew you have the first one. See, I can see. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and now I just uh, want to tweak the command a little bit because in our sample, we want to go to build uh, uh, yeah, a to-do app or a, a app that uh, maintains tasks. And that's why I want to define a domain model with the name task. Yes. And I want to have a corresponding uh, view to it and that is called task detail for just for the moment. Cool. So executing this, it will ask me again if uh, yeah, which UI framework I want to use. So this we will probably improve a little bit later on, but now I want to stick with material design 
uh, hit enter. Um, yeah, and then nothing, we'll nothing is perfect. Up. Nothing is perfect. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> at least we have a few things to improve. Yeah. Okay. So it's finished. Cool. And if you open up the project again, three mm -hmm. things happens. Okay. First, you should see probably a model folder where we see exactly. our task dot cs yeah. okay and this is our domain model right this is our domain model mm. because we try to follow domain driven development but that could be probably for the next or different video and mm. then and two other things happen which was in fact it did create uh, a component for our view ah oh, task detail yeah that's task right detail. Mm -hmm. and it did create a, a rule file supposed to be called task OSS, yes. So the rule file is open and again, just like we said in previous video, it's really similar to CSS or SES. We have selectors, right? If, Gregor, if you can highlight uh, selectors, yes. Selector mm -hmm. is anything that has equals and we have properties and those properties are able to drive whatever and however this is going to be rendered and you will see it in a minute. So, but we will get more into details of OSS and how everything works in the next session. Exactly. Currently, it's just important to know that the schematics just have created some sample rules for us to get started immediately. Yes. And that's okay. pretty much it. We have three things created. And cool. now let's go back to the terminal. Yes, I do. Yeah, and I have seen in the, in the command line here that it's also needed to compile the OSS uh, rule set to have a consumable rule set that we are able to process uh, on runtime. Yes, and as you know, we are not really able to load anything else other than maybe JSON or uh, another TypeScript class into our project. So that's why what we do, we take the content of this rule file and we will we are turning it into the actual TypeScript class. Yeah. And, and this content is safe inside one constant. And that's it. All right. OK, cool. Then I will just let me just execute it. Yes. And yeah, and it processes the application rules and our task rules that we have created recently. OK. Yes. OK, good. And I think we compile everything. And maybe we are ready to start the application. I think so too. So I will just I'll run npm start to. And I, and I guess everybody knows this command, right? NPM I think start so. <laughs> so before we have a look at the application, we of course need to hook up our generated component with our existing application. And for this, uh, I, we want to have a brief look into uh, this component, uh, the task detail component. Yep. And what we see here is that uh, the schematic just uh, created some sample data for us. So this is a point where we later on load every data over a service, for example. And we just use this property object uh, to bind this to a component that is coming from Meta UI. And we can pass in the actual data into that component. We can also optional uh, yeah, add an operation to it. We can a little bit later to it, what you can do with it. And this is everything that you need. And our Meta UI is now able to process the rules and knows exactly how it should render the UI. Have you yes, something to uh, add, Frank? Yes, and basically these three lines will do everything. It will do different set of pages and different navigation. And this is done only by these three lines. And we'll definitely get into more details in the next episode. But exactly, for yeah. now, what you need to know is we are telling the rule engine, hey, can you create a view context for us in order to render this object for this specific operation? An operation is read only, we are editing, we are creating, and for a specific layout, because you can have different set of layouts you want, you can add different set of key value pairs, like those bindings, right? And yeah. by, do, by doing this, you can completely change the way your application looks and behaves. Awesome. Okay, then everything that I need to do is to use this task detail component inside the task uh, and in, inside of the app component, of course. I will uh, remove the uh, default the beautiful, 
default code from Angular, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and then I would just ask test detail as an entry point. The app recompiles, and now we are ready to go to the browser. Cool. Okay, it actually works. <laughs> and it, yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so what just happened? You, you know, we really generated almost fully functional application, really out of nothing. Just those three right. lines of code, nothing else. And you can click yeah. create. It has its own editing structure with just three fields. You can actually click or maybe edit. Yeah. It will be so, completely different structure. Mm -hmm. Right, two fields and all the way back to view, the read only mode. This is where we started. It has all the fields. Well, yeah, but I also think now it's a good point to stop. We covered a lot of ground already, including the setup. Uh, we created some rules. We uh, get everything uh, running uh, to run as expected. And I would say in the next video, we will start by uh, tweaking the rules a little bit and enhancing this application. Yep, I agree. And actually what I did for next time, you will see it. I can actually put together a little exercise or little assignment for you with three simple questions to actually show users how we can actually tweak those rules to completely change the behavior on the fly. Oh yeah, nice. Then I would say challenge accepted. <laughs> and yep. yeah, um, for all of you who are watching this, thank you again for taking the time following us. And if you have any ideas, comments, uh, please uh, just let us know in the comment section below. If you like our comment, uh, you can also give this video a thumbs up or you can just subscribe the Meta UI TV channel. And if you do not like this content, uh, just do not bother. <laughs> yes. Okay, then thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.